that pain. Right, turn around out of the way. Both the assistant state attorneys are present. Both defense counsel and Mr. Severs. State's ready. Yes, sir. Defense is ready. Defense is ready, Your Honor. Bring them out. Yes, sir. Please be seated. I'll ask our jurors again, did you follow my instructions, not talk about the case among yourselves with anybody else, or look up any of the people or places involved? Even if you did so inadvertently, now would be the time to raise your hand and let me know. For the record, no jurors lifted their hand. Mr. Wright, I'll remind you, you're still under oath. Sir. Yes, sir. Defense. Yes. Uh, I want to go back to what we were talking about at the rest stop area. Do you recall that? Yes. Okay. And I just want to make sure that I understand what we spoke about. You said you were cleaning out the car. Is that correct? That was one of the things I did, yes. And Jimmy dumped the contents of the uh, backpack on the ground. Is that correct? I, had... I don't know if he dumped it or if he took the things out and put them. But, yeah, my, my suit was on the ground. Okay. So. Did you watch him dump it out? I didn't. Okay. You said you knew it was your suit by the order in which it came in, correct? I, yes, I believe that that was true. Okay. So if you didn't see, if you didn't see Mr. Rogers dump out the backpack, you can't actually say which order they came out, correct? Yeah, I, I guess I can't be absolutely positive of that. So yesterday, you testified that you've been disabled since 2005, is that correct? No, since 2015. I'm sorry, yes. Uh, 2004, yes, 2005. Okay. And um, that disability came after uh, two traffic crashes, is that correct? Uh, no. Uh, the disability actually happened after the first accident uh, of the two that you're referring to. Uh, uh, it, so. And uh, that was the traumatic brain injury, is that correct? Yes. Which resulted in a diagnosis of bipolar disorder, is that correct? Yes. also testified that there were several instances when you were working on the medical practice computers you had to be here in Florida in person is that correct yes and when you were here in Florida in person where would you stay uh, at the Severs house and when you did your computer work Mostly you did that remotely through the use of a virtual private network, correct? Yes. And you testified uh, yesterday that your VPN allowed you to take control of any of the, the stations at, um, at the medical practice. Is that correct? Uh, in most, yes. 
Okay. Any that were on the server, correct? They were connected to the server. You could access them. Yeah, and up and up and running. And, and yes. you could you could actually um, use that computer as if you were the user who was physically there in front of the computer, correct? Yeah, I think okay. that's accurate. Um, so that that VPN uh, gave you access to any and all information that was contained on the medical uh, practice servers, correct? For the patient data, yes. Patient data billing? No. In fact, a lot of the work that you performed was to make sure that it was up to insurance code. Is that correct? Uh, no, I wouldn't say that. So, you spoke a little bit about the prepaid phones. Remember we were talking about the prepaid phones? Yes. Okay. Was there any reason to believe that anyone would have been listening in to a regular telephone conversation on your everyday, day-to-day -day phone? Depends on who you ask. Okay. I, uh... um, well, let me ask you this. You being a convicted felon, is that something that you would worry about on a day-to-day -day basis? Someone's mm. listening in. No. Yesterday, do you recall saying that neither Mark nor I were ever into this type of criminal activity? Do you recall saying that? Um, when was that said? That was said yesterday. Yes. Okay. Um, and what type of criminal activity were you referring to? Objection. Sustained. You were referring to the criminal activity of murder, correct? Objection. Sustained. Can you explain what you meant when you said neither Mark nor I were into this type of criminal activity yesterday? Objection. Sustained. after you got your phones, all the planning was done on those phones, is that correct? All the details, yes. Okay. And um, the phone record, is that going to support long conversations or just a couple minutes here, a couple minutes there? It would probably vary. You said that you were not certain of the time frame of the uh, Seavers family trip when they went to New York and Connecticut, correct? Yeah, I don't know when that was planned. I know when I was told about it. But. Yesterday you said that when Jimmy found the hammer, he made a crude joke about Teresa's destiny. Do you recall that? Yes. What did you do when he said that? I ignored him. said when you first approached Dr. Seavers during the attack, you didn't know where Jimmy was, is that correct? Yeah, I didn't know exactly where he was. Okay. And then <coughs> you said he came, you said from your right-hand side, is that correct? Yes. And at that time, he already had a hammer in his hand, is that correct? Yes. But you don't know where he got that hammer. Well, I know he got it at the house, but I don't know where he picked it up at that point. 
And you know that he didn't take the hammer with him, is that correct? I don't know. I, not that I saw. Okay. Um, well, if you did know, you would have, you've agreed to the state to help them recover additional physical evidence, correct? Yes. So you would have you would have helped them recover that if you knew, correct? Yes. Likewise, you you mentioned this um, aerial photo that you. You got from Google Earth, is that correct? I, I'm not sure exactly which program, but it was Google Maps, Google Earth. Google one Maps, of those. Google Earth. But you would agree that, again, you would want to help the state by providing them access to that additional information, correct? Yeah, if I had it, yes. It corroborates your story, doesn't it? Uh, yeah, I guess it would. Okay. Um, so did you let them know which device that they could pull that data off? I told them I don't know, which is the truth. I gave them multiple possibilities. When was the last time that you saw the inside of that backpack from the rest stop? I, I I don't know that I ever saw the inside of it. Okay. You just you said that you saw basically two jumpsuits on the ground, is that correct? Well, I, I saw both of them. One of them was on the ground. Okay, the one I believed was mine. What else was on the ground next to the jumpsuits? Uh, I, I don't know. See any gloves? Uh, I, I don't know. See any duct tape? Uh, I know the duct tape was there, yes. Okay. The gloves and duct tape he kept in his cooler, except for while we were at the house. So, And that was just a pair. It was a roll of duct tape and... A couple pair of gloves, so. Okay, but you said the cooler didn't make it inside the, the house with you for, for the murder, Which will, Yeah, that's why I said it was in the back. So it would have been in the back. Yes. Now, after you got back to Missouri, Mark's brother Scott called you, told you what happened, is that correct? Yes. I think he actually talked to my wife, but, yeah, one of us talked to him. Okay. And you sent Mark a text saying, Scott Scott told me what happened. I'm so sorry. Do you recall sending that text? Yes. At which point, you and Angie got in a car, drove down to go to the, uh, the service. Do you recall that? Yes. My, off, my wife is also long-term, you know, relationship with, with, the seat, with Mark. Okay. Um, do you recall who was at the service? Uh, no, I, I don't know most of the people. I'm not that familiar with any of the family other than Mark's family. and I've met Teresa's family, but I, uh, I don't know who anybody is. Okay. So you don't I mean, recall. Meeting, I mean, I shouldn't. Uh, let me let me rephrase that. I know some of the people that were there. I don't. I mean, there was a lot of people. It was a big. So you don't recall seeing Teresa's mother? Yes. How did How do you think she she felt? Objection. Close Sustained. Sustained. Recall seeing. Seaver's daughters, Josie and Carmi? Yes. When you saw them, did you tell them, I'm really Objection. sorry, I murdered your mother? Objection. Relevance. Sustained.
funeral, did you do anything to indicate any type of remorse for your actions? Objection. Sustained. So, yesterday, Mr. Hunter was talking to you. It seemed like you were concerned about whether or not they had seen, the jury had seen a diagram of the map. Do you recall that? Diagram of the map. Or I don't a, know a what diagram that means. of the home. Uh, only because I was trying to describe where things were at and in relationship to each other. I mean, okay. So I didn't know how much detail I needed to go into to describe what I was talking about. So you want to be as helpful to the jury as possible. Is that correct? Yes. You believe that they should get as much information as possible, correct? I, I believe they should get as much as needed to be to understand what happened. Yes. Okay. So I think it would help to see the video of your proffer. Objection. Sustain. Can both sides approach? ever provide Mr. Sievers with details about what happened inside the house during the murder? I tried to talk to him once while I was down for the funeral, but no, the conversation didn't happen. He didn't want to talk about it. Okay. So, and, and you said that the only time you ever spoke to Jimmy was just briefly at your wedding. Is that correct? The only time that Mark did? Yes. Um, I, I don't know. We were together all day and all evening, all night, all day the next day, so I don't know if I would consider that briefly. But So Jimmy wouldn't have had the opportunity then to tell Mr. Severs about the, the details of the murder, to your knowledge? At the wedding, it hadn't happened yet. Okay. Just a moment, Your Honor. Mr. Wright, is it? Do um, you, underst you understand that your plea agreement is still in effect, right? Yes. And all of the provisions within your plea agreement are still in play. Yes. You understand that? Yes. Do you remember the discussion that you and I had at your proffer about your wife, Angie Wright, about Mrs. Wright? Yes. What did I tell you about Mrs. Wright? You said that there was nothing in our agreement to protect her. I mean, probably not those exact words, but... Did I threaten? No. Mrs. Wright? No. Did I threaten you about Mrs. Wright? No. Was there any legal action taken against Mrs. Wright at all, first of all, by the state of Florida regarding this case? No. By the state of Missouri? No. Regarding this case? By anyone no. about this case? No. 
is Ms. Wright, Mrs. Wright mentioned anywhere within our plea agreement? No. Is what you're doing today and have done before regarding this case, regarding your testimony, in any way motivated by anything having to do with Mrs. Wright? No. Did you ever see any legal filings regarding the Seavers medical practice? Let me ask a more specific question. Thank you. Do you know whether they ever filed bankruptcy? I do not. And when you've used the word bankruptcy, where did you get that word from? From Mark. Do you, in fact, know whether the, the medical practice was even bankrupt? No. Uh, all the information that I had was come from that conversation with Mark. Did you ever see or have any firsthand knowledge about the clinic being sold? Uh, <laughs> Before the murder? No. And so the statements you made about that, selling the clinic, where did that information come from? From Mark. Do you know of any places between here and Missouri where you can go where there aren't any surveillance cameras? No. Any places where you can go eat food where there aren't any surveillance cameras? No. Anywhere where you can buy gas for that Elantra where there aren't any surveillance cameras? No. Did you expect as you traveled down to Florida that you might be seen on cameras? Uh, we tried to avoid them, but yeah, I mean, we parked far away when we stopped at places. And, and Did you expect that law enforcement would figure out who was involved and show up in Missouri? No. <clears throat> I did expect them to probably talk to me, but I never expected them to show up and knock my door down. And just to be certain and make sure that everybody understood what you understood what you said on direct exam yesterday. In your first statement on July 12th, 2015, did you lie or tell the truth to law enforcement? Both. You lied? I did, yes. Then on August 27th, or uh, I might be wrong on the date, but the statement you gave after you were arrested in Missouri, did you lie or tell the truth to law enforcement? Uh, again, it was mixed. There was lies about involvement, but there was a lot of conversation that was all true. And those, uh, and we'll be specific, you lied about your involvement in this homicide during those statements? Yes, I denied any involvement or knowledge. Again, during that initial proffer in January of um, 2016, during the beginning part of that proffer, did you lie or tell the truth to the prosecution at that time? Uh, the beginning of the proffer, I think, had to do with Mark, which was all true. I, di I didn't say anything that wasn't true. Um, when we started talking about the specifics of what happened at the house that night uh, of the murder, uh, I, I struggled. I, I did. I did lie about it. I corrected those in the same statement. But after, of course, your attorneys took you outside to talk to you. Uh, yeah, but I had lied to them too. They didn't know. So our meeting wasn't to tell me stop lying, tell the truth. It was to kind of more explain to me that 
that I, you know, I had nothing to lose by, by uh, being completely honest. And on July 12th, that initial discussion with law enforcement, had you been paid by Mr. Severs for what you did for him? Only to cover the expenses of the trip. But not for the actual murder? No. The agreement was it would have to wait till he got insurance payment. And then that second statement that you gave after you arrested to law enforcement, had you been paid by Mr. Severs for the murder at that point? No. <laughs> and what was the purpose of lying to law enforcement when they asked you about whether you'd been to Florida and whether you had been involved in the murder of Dr. Severs? Uh, to throw him off track, uh, to protect all three of us. I was the middle person, so I thought that if I could get the focus away from me, that it would protect both of them as well. And you didn't want to be arrested. Yeah, right. And you didn't want, uh, you also didn't want Mr. Wright and Mr. Severs to be arrested either? Mr. Rogers and Mr. Severs. Mr. Rogers, I'm sorry, Mr. Rogers and Mr. Severs to no, be arrested I didn't. either? No, I didn't. <clears throat> And counsel asked you about the text message that you sent to Mr. Severs after his brother, the other Mr. Severs, contacted, contacted you about the death of Dr. Severs. Do you recall that text? About letting him know that we were on our way down, yes. You, um, what was the purpose of sending Mark Severs that text? Oh. I mean, it, it was true, uh, at least the heartfelt part of it, I mean, the caring part, um, but it was also to cover you wanted to make it seem like you just found out? Yes. Did you think that, um, well, why would, why would it be necessary to send Mr. Seavers and again, let's, let me ask the first question. That text that counsel's asking you about, was it sent from your other phone to Mr. Severs' other phone, or was it sent from your main phone to his main phone? Yeah, my other phone was destroyed during the trip back from Florida the first time. And um, between the end of April of 2015 and the um, beginning of July of 2015, after you and Mr. Rogers and Mr. Severs conspired to kill Dr. Severs, was there uh, a lot of contact between you and Mark Severs? I'm sorry, I'm getting my time frames mixed up. Uh, April, this would have been... Um, I'm sorry, what was the time frame between that you asked the me wedding, about? Between the week of the wedding... And the murder? And the the, uh, the murder. Did you have a lot of contact with Mr. Severs? Yes. On um, the regular phone as well as on the other phone? Both, yes. I'm going to show you Exhibit 96C. If you want to take a moment and review 96C and tell me whether 96C contains messages and calls between you and Mr. Severs. Uh, 
and it goes backwards. It goes from most recent to okay. most distant in the dates. Okay. Yeah, these are all from my phone. And you've had a chance to review the contents of 96C? Uh, I haven't read it, but yes, I've, I skimmed through it. And uh, those are all messages and calls between you and the defendant, Mark Severs? Yes. <clears throat> and are those true and accurate representations of messages that the two of you exchanged on your regular phones? Yes. At this time, Your Honor, the state would admit Exhibit 96C. Objections, you noted. Overruled. Okay. Showed admitted. Let me direct your attention, um, Mr. Wright, to really the second page of the exhibit. Are you able to turn? Okay. The very top line, line 28, a message from Mark Severs to your phone. Do you see that? Yes. Can you read that for the court? <laughs> Talking about, you said number 28, right? Line, uh, row 28, it's okay. the very top yeah. cell. I will dispose of outdated computer tomorrow after erasing everything from its memory and then remove hard drive as well. Uh, and that's a message you received from Mark Severs? Yes. And what computer, what outdated computer was he destroying and erasing its memory and the hard drive? I'm sorry, do you know, happen to know what day the 24th was? Well, if Sunday was the 28th. Was Thursday? It Thursday, yeah. Um, this would have been, this was one that was sent from me right before, right before he, they went out of town on their trip, if, if I have my dates right. Uh, so this would have been referring to his phone. So to, to his Mr. other Seaver. phone. I'm sorry. To his other phone. Yes. Okay. So Mr. Severs wasn't destroying an outdated computer. No. That was a, a a coded message to you to tell you he was destroying his other phone. Objection leading. Sustained. It, what it, was the why? No. Why does the f message say computer, and you're saying he's talking about a phone? Uh, because it was on our regular phones and it would have needed to be camouflaged. Uh, so the, the computer would have been the phone, the erasing everything from its memory and removing the hard drive would have been referring to the SIM card. And then if you flip back to the front page, a short time afterwards, you respond to that message. There's a message to Mark Severs on row 27. Yes. What's your response? Good plan. So you knew what he was talking about when you received that message? Yes. You knew it wasn't a computer? Yes. Okay, I, my, my co-counsel is indicating my math might not. There's a reason why I'm a lawyer. The, if Sunday was the 28th, Saturday was the 27th, Friday the 26th, Thursday the 25th, Wednesday the 24th. Okay. Uh, does that sound correct? Yeah, it was all right before the trip. Okay. Thank you. Good. Hunter again brought up your February 19th statement. 
wherein you express concern about Ms. Wright. Uh, Do you recall Mr. Hunter telling you that and then some other things happened that I can't discuss right now, but that blip got a little bigger and a little louder, referring, of course, to Angie. Do you recall him saying that? Uh, yeah, I don't remember when that was said, but yes, we he, I remember. And he said, I'm not making any, you any promises about Angela Wright. She's not in this contract, okay? What I want is for Miss Wright, for that blip, to go away. Do you recall Mr. Hunter telling you that? Yes. He then asked you, do you understand what I'm saying? Do you, want, do you recall Mr. Hunter asking Objection you that? Objection as to counsel's emphasis. Overruled. Do you recall him saying, do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, not specifically, but I know that was said. He said, Mr. Hunter, that is, said, that's what I want. I want the blip to go away, to disappear. I don't want the blip on my radar screen. Do you recall Mr. Hunter saying that? Yes. And without making a promise to you, Without making a promise to you about what would or what wouldn't happen to your wife, Angela Wright, did that make you feel a little better about going forward with the rest of your statement that day? Um, I, I don't, not necessarily about going forward with the statement. It you made me feel about better it. about Angie. but You were worried about your wife, weren't you? I was worried about my entire family, but here we were talking about Angie, yes. I mean, you, you married Angie, right? Yes. Right, <laughs> correct. You, you, obviously, you love your wife, correct? Yes. You're gonna you're gonna try and protect her, right? Yes. You're gonna you're gonna make sure that whatever else happens, that your wife is gonna be okay, correct? I. Yeah, I would like. Yeah, I would say I would like to do that. And so, one of the things that you that you can do is participate in this prosecution, correct? Uh, no, this my, my participation in this had nothing to do with whether she was protected or not. I voiced a concern. He responded to it, but again, he clearly stated that it had nothing to do with this agreement. That's when um, your lawyer, Ms. Parker, told you, or maybe Mr. Hunter, I'm, I can't really tell from, from the transcript. Ms. Parker said, is it, is it fair to say, though, if things don't differ from what you... Attention to the counsel reading from the transcript. I think the witness needs to be asked a question. Sustained. Do you recall Ms. Parker... Participating in that conversation. Uh, yeah, I think so. And you recall Ms. Parker um, saying that <coughs> if it's status quo from here on out, that that blip will go away. Do you recall her saying that? Not those precise words, but... And then do you recall Mr. Hunter saying, I just want the blip to go away? Yes. Which, if you remember, did your lawyer say, gotcha? I, d I don't remember. to yourself and this just now as 
the middle person. Do you recall that? Yes. What is it about your involvement that makes you the middle person? Uh, because Mark didn't know anything about Jimmy. Jimmy didn't know it was Mark until the very end. But. Okay, so Mark set this whole thing in motion, right? Yes. Jimmy carried it out, is that correct? Well, Jimmy and I did, yes. Okay, but you were just the broker, is that fair to say? No. I was obviously more involved than that. Nothing further, Your Honor. Anything further from the state? Nothing further from the state. Is this witness to be retained or released? He's released by the state. Retained. Sir, we'll let you know if you're needed again. Thank you. Okay. Next witness. State calls Ann Lisa. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Thank you. Good morning. Can you please state your full name for the record? My name is Ann Lisa. And, um, <clears throat> can you spell your last name for the reporter? L I S A. All right. Ann. And, Miss Lisa, what state do you live in? Connecticut. And, um, how do you, do you know Teresa Seavers? Yes, I do. How do you know her? Teresa was my sister. And when you say um, that she was your sister, do you have a parent or parents in common? We had the same parents. And uh, Miss Lisa, do you know Mark Severs? I do. And how, and how do you know him? Mark was married to my sister. Let me uh, turn your attention to the weekend of um, Saturday, June 27th, and Sunday, June 28th of 2015. Where were you that weekend? I was with my family, all my siblings, and my mother and her husband and our extended families, our children, um, celebrating my mother's birthday. She had turned 75 in March, and we got together as a family um, my mother loved being with all of her children, and we went to New Windsor, New York. We rented a house on a lake. And how many, how many other siblings do you and, and Dr. Severs have? Um, we have a brother with the same parents um, and another brother um, with the same mother and another sister with the same father, but she wasn't with us that weekend. And um, when was the family get-together in um, New York planned? We had planned it early in the year, probably around, we'd been talking about it for a long time, but I think the official plans went underway around February, March. We decided to get, you know, look for a property to be available. And um, what was the purpose of looking for a property to be available? Well, we had to have enough rooms to accommodate you know, um, vacation time in New England, it's, it can be tricky to get a 
get a place available. So we had to find a place that would accommodate us, all of the grandkids, and we wanted there to be a pool and, you know, fun things to do to relax together on the weekend. What kind of accommodations were you looking for? Were you looking for like a resort of some kind or some other type of accommodations? No, we wanted a, we wanted a private house. We're allowed and we you know we planned on having a lot of fun and we wanted to have the freedom to, you know, play music and be outside, you know, and not disturb anybody. And um, did Dr. Seavers uh, come to spend the weekend with the family that weekend and, and participate in the family celebration? Yes, she, she was with us. Um, did she come by herself or did she bring anybody with her? She came with Mark and her two daughters. And when you say Mark, you're referring to the defendant, Mr. Seavers? Yes. Um, what time did the, what day did the festivities in New York start? Um, we got there at varying times on the Friday afternoon. Um, probably about, between, we arrived between the hours of 2 and 4, started showing up. And um, did Mr. and Dr. Seavers and their kids participate in the family festivities that weekend? Yes. And then it, um, at some point, did the festivities end and it became time for everybody to go back home or wherever it was they were going? Yes. And when did that time come? That was Sunday. We probably started getting our things together, uh, you know, 11 o'clock, you know, after breakfast, late breakfast. And um, we all left at varying times, you know, between 12.30 and 1.30. We had different places to go. We were all in different cars. Did the Seavers part of the family have their own vehicle? Um, they would have had a rental car, um, which they would use to get them to one of the New York airports, and I don't know if it was LaGuardia or JFK, to be honest with you. And did, they, did the Seavers family leave and come back to... Fort Myers on Sunday the 28th, or did they do something else? Teresa was headed back to Fort Myers, and Mark was going to come to Connecticut with the girls um, to stay at my mom's for a few days, and the girls were going to have an opportunity to visit with their cousins in Connecticut. And did um, Dr. Seavers, in fact, leave to come back to Fort Myers? She did. Um, do you know how long... Um, the girls and Mr. Seavers were supposed to stay in uh, Connecticut? I can't remember if they were supposed to return on, on Wednesday or Thursday. Well, they were going to stay for days, hours, but days, not hours. Correct. I'm going to show you what's been previously, previously marked as State's Exhibit Number 1, previously been shown to the defense, and ask if you recognize... What's an exhibit number one? Yes. You can hold it. What is it? This is my beautiful sister, Teresa. It's a picture of her? Yes. And that's a true and accurate representation of what she looked like? Yes, it is. Your Honor, at this time the state would admit what's been previously identified as state's exhibit one and the evidence as state's one. No objection. We'll show it admitted. Well, would you like to hold up the picture of your... Beautiful sister, as you said, and introduce her to the jury. Okay, thank you. How old was your sister um, at the time of her death in 2015? She was 46. And how old would she have been today? She would have turned... 51 the day the jury was sworn in. This week? Yes. <clears throat> Honor, we tender the witness. Defense. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, sir. So 
said your sister Teresa, you described her as your beautiful sister. Yes. She's a very pretty lady, isn't she? Yes, she was. And um, am I correct in saying that you and your sister had a very, very close relationship? Yes, we did. And you've previously described Teresa as your soulmate? Yes, she was. She is. Um, <coughs> I think that's all I have for you. Thank you. Thank you. This witness to be released or retained? Uh, she's free to go from the state, Your Honor. Uh, she's free to go from the bench, Your Honor. Thank you, ma'am. You may step down. Thank you. Do we have a moment? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're going to take a brief recess, let everyone stretch your legs, use the restroom if you'd like. Please don't talk about the case among yourselves or with anybody else or look up any of the people or places involved, and we'll be with you momentarily. Please be seated. Five minutes. <coughs> 